Good morning, dear saints, and all you other individuals out there. Hello. This is hardly the video that I thought was going to be done today. Got a lot of stuff going on here in the background. Got uh, been asked some really good questions. Um, there is a video in the works, Lord willing, I will come, um, where we will be addressing marriage, um, what the scriptures have to say about what goes about being married in the eyes of the Lord according to scripture. That one's gonna, that, that will come. When? I don't know. But that's in the works. I told you what's coming. When? I don't know. That's for, you know. But got a lot of stuff going on and also there's a, our dear brother Jeff, he needs our prayers. Um, his his, um, as I understand, he needs prayers because he's going to be going to see someone about his um, livelihood. And of course, our dear brother, he's unable to work because of the thing there. And now he's got, you know, they said they, can, they, said they can't do the surgery on our brother Jeff uh, because uh, he's got heart problems and he's got bone spurs sticking in his muscle and whatnot. So this, this, this poor brother... I mean, the guy could barely more, could barely use his arm. He's in constant pain all the time. And now they're like, oh, well, your heart can't take the surgery. It's like, ah! Oh! They're, they're really trying to mess with this dear brother. So please do keep him in prayer. And also, too, uh, YouTube recently took down an old video uh, off the channel that the Lord gave me. Um, uh, an older video where we go through Scripture proving that the way that the Diaper is to be used as contrary to the way the Jesuits would have you to use the diaper. Uh, they, they took that down. Uh, you know. Touch that sacred calf. <laughs> you know, touch the sacred calf. <laughs> or, or the steel of the Jesuit punyard or whatever. It's like, it's, you know, that, that's, that's here on beloved YouTube, okay? You, you can find near pornographic videos. You can find sodomite love relationships and stories. You can find veiled pedophilia here. But, oh boy, someone uses a perfect standard, absolute truth to kind of tell people, hey, you know the way the Jesuits want you to use something? Well, not the way our Lord would have you to use something for your benefit. Whoa, boy! Dad, Dad, watch out for that. Watch out for that. Okay? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. There, have been, there has been some activities happening recently, the past two weeks. And I am convinced that... The only other man on this earth that I hate, besides myself, that I hate and despise and abhor, um, I have this nagging suspicion that this individual is partly responsible in a way for this. Uh, recently, I've been getting a lot of these um, guys who talk about, you know, growing your YouTube channel. I keep, they, they're sending me emails, I block them, and they keep coming, they keep coming. And we're going to look at one of these guys' comments on uh, the last video. This, this is really getting grievous to me. Uh, but then again, that's what the enemies do. That's what the enemies do. you got to remember, a lot of the enemies, brethren, that we are going to encounter are sociopathic, narcissistic, juvenile, <laughs> to, to say the uh, very least, and extraordinarily petty and they go run to their little mothers with uh, cry when you know because they like to bring up dirt on you but the minute you do it to them they go run to their to the system that they manipulate and cry doxing doxing when they themselves do the same thing very interesting but I've been getting a lot of these guys coming around and um, I'm going to look at one of their comments and um, kind of go off on them a little bit. Brethren, sisters, you may see mean Brad today. I know even even my dear brother, our dear brother, who 
um, is like a son that I never had, even though he has his own father and mother. Even he gets a little like, Brad, will you stop? Even he is like, you know, Brad, he doesn't like to see me, Brad. <laughs> okay? So I'm just warning you guys, you may see that today. Okay? But Psalm 10 in your authorized version of the scripture. Psalm 10. Oh, we will read on to verse 10 in Psalm 10. And see, this is what these individuals that have been emailing me nonstop, and they all seem to have hemetic names or stem from India or something like that. You, you'll see. You'll see. It's, it's very peculiar. It's very peculiar. It's like, well, why do you think the guy, the other guy beside yourself, who you hate, why do you think he has something to do with it? Well, this individual uh, sent stuff about me out in my locality, like to the uh, Lutheran church, saying that Bradley should be your pastor. It's like, wow, dude, you petty infinitesimal gnat. Wow, you, you really are. You really are. Well, but did something like that. I mean, you got to remember, brethren, the enemies that uh, Satan is sending against us they're intelligent. They're subtle. They're crafty. They're sociopathic. They're narcissistic. They're petty and juvenile. Okay? You gotta remember that. You gotta remember that. But Psalm 10, verses 1 on to verse 10. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride, he shall be as gods. I, 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 I. Okay? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor, poor and needy saints. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Yeah, the net that these brilliant people that they have laid, they will fall into it themselves. Okay? For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous. Whom the Lord abhorreth. And see, the premise of these individuals that have been harassing me uh, to an extent recently about grow your. You, and you know what they do? They take screenshots and they like the one had a, a red line pointing to the thing there. It's like, well, your videos are good, but your, your, your titles are bad, your description and your thumbnail. And yes, in the video titles, I use the hashtags now. Those work. Those work. Okay? you got to remember, too. There was a time when YouTube was ferociously going after the, the main channel here. Ferociously, daily almost. And I was antagonizing them back with the useless little... It's not actually useless. Useless. You know, you have that feedback thing option in the YouTube studio where you can it's pretty much useless it pretty much is like trying to talk to someone from YouTube because they took down a video and it's like you can you can go ahead and protest this but it's like you know nine times out of ten they're not going to you're gonna get the run around it's like it's not even worth the effort <laughs> okay but the, the the feedback thing is basically useless Unless you are sending them scriptures, rebuking them, and antagonizing them, like I was doing, like I was doing, I was, I was, there was quite a time that, you know, they were daily harassing the channel, and I was harassing them back. And see, see, and that was a rebuke to me, and then I got the strike, coincidentally, and had to go over to the backup channel and it's like okay okay the lord's like brad you know you don't fight fire with fire because fire always wins no matter who's holding it but see the point of why we're looking at this the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blessed the covetousness blesseth excuse me the covetous whom the lord abhorreth see Job's attacks from his three friends, the constant gnawing, Job, who is uh, righteous and upright, one who feared God and eschewed evil, okay, perfect and upright, 
The Lord himself said that of Job. But even Job, after constant gnawing, gnawing, what happened? He got in defense and turned it back on himself to justify himself. Even Job did that. And that's one of the tactics of the enemy, to constantly pick, 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 pick. And you know what? Um, there are certain enemies of ours um, who can compose themselves pretty good, um, but even they will, you know, these are the better ones who can compose themselves. Like uh, Elmer from New York, that guy's pretty good at composing himself, but even he will lose his cool every once in a while. Even uh, Mr. Smiley, Mr. David Daniels from Chip, Chick Publications. Even he will lose his cool, not publicly, but even he will lose his cool against brethren who ask him questions. Okay? Even he will. Not publicly. Not publicly. But even he will. Okay? Even he will. But there are enemies out there who are better at it than others. Okay? But see, the point is they pick at you. They gnaw at you. Why? Because water will wear the stones eventually. And that's what they hope to do. They hope to wear the stones, and we are lively stones, that they may elicit a response. Well, here's my response. And see, the base that they attack is covetousness. And we are warned uh, extraordinarily about covetousness, but you got to remember, our spirit and soul are housed within this sagging skin suit. Okay? And there is a whole lot of evidence out there that suggests that when people walk with the Lord for an extended period of time, it gets harder for them to turn away from that flesh. So this is one of the things that the enemy will pick at to try to get a response out of you. Okay? The wicked through the pride of his countenance, his bodily thing, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He has sent in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in be in adversity till you at the great white throne of judgment, of course. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Listen to some of these sleazy believers on their live streams, okay? Now, you're not, not the ones that are uh, present enough to compose themselves in their facade, okay? Because, you know, you, those guys are actually... Those guys are actually pretty decent at holding up their facade and composing themselves. Okay, they are. You gotta give the devil his due. Okay. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. And right here, under his tongue is mischief. Vanity. There was a movie done, and I hate to make reference to it, but for the cause of this discussion. Oh, I'm going to. There was a movie that had Al Pacino in it and uh, uh, um, the Wick guy. Reeves. Um, the Canoe guy. Can, uh, canoe Reeves or whatever. It was called The Devil's Advocate. No, just leave it alone. There was a quote from that movie where Al Pacino, who was playing the devil, says, Vanity is definitely my favorite sin. Vanity. Vanity. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. It is, you know, uh, holding your place here, we were on verse 7, uh, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Vanity. Vanity of vanities. Seth the preacher. All is Vanity. All is vanity, except the Lord, of course, and what the Lord is, and who He is, and the life that He gives you, okay? But, uh, 1 Timothy, chapter 6, 
verses 6 on to verse 9 as we covered in the previous video. We're covering it again. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Like it says in Job, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Man in his best state is altogether vanity. And what better way to get to a man than to attack him through vanity? So, verse 7 in Psalm 10, His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Vanity. And what better way, like I said, to attack a man than trying to attack with vanity. Okay? Because you got to remember, even Paul, the greatest of the saints of the church of the living God, Paul had a pride problem. Paul had a thorn in the flesh to keep him from boasting himself. But you read Acts chapter 21, okay? Paul faltered. Paul faltered sometimes. Paul made mistakes. Paul would, you know, like it says in Romans chapter 7, that which I do I allow not, but that which I hate that do I act. That do I, okay? Paul understood, and he's like, oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from the body of this death? See, this is a sign of the times, people. This is what the enemy attacks you on. Your vanity. Your flesh. And when you lose sight of the Lord Jesus Christ, what's taking up the rest of your sight? Vanity of vanity, sir. Verse 8 in 1 Timothy chapter 6, And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Let us remember the simplistic, necessary things. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Mm. Back to Psalm 9, uh, 10. Verse 8. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocents. His eyes are privily set against the poor, the poor saints. We're poor and needy. We need the Lord every day for our sustenance, for our life. Okay? He lieth in wait secretly. It's like, you know, it's like. Some of these guys, you think you're so cute. You think you're so clever. You think I don't know that's you hiding behind one of your myriad sock accounts. You don't think I don't know that's you. Then again, being a narcissist, you know, you, you're patting yourself on the back, you know. I probably will unblock your main channel. Just, just, just so you can at least have the stones because I know it's you. And you at least have the stones to at least come out in public. Okay? Give me a break. But, anyway. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. And what's that net that Satan used? What's the bait? Man at his best state is altogether vanity. It's vanity! Think about it. Think about it. Okay, all your wealth that you're getting up, uh, getting you here, there, Mr. Charlatan, okay, all the wealth, all the gain that you attribute to godliness when you die. Now, you got a wife, you got a son, you got a daughter, you got children, you're, you're, that'll go to them. But ultimately, when you die, you ain't taking nothing with you, are you? Are you? That's why we're supposed to concentrate on the simple things. Food and raiment. Okay? And if anything else comes, like electricity, a bed, clothes, you know, clothing that, you know, praise the Lord. But these are all luxuries. Okay? We're supposed to keep our focus on the important thing, and that is what? But that is what? Verse 10. He croucheth. 
and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. False humility. Like Satan with his ministers of righteousness, they th that because they make you believe that they have your best interests at your heart, but it's all about themselves. It's all about themselves. And they're doing it so because misery loves company. They want hell. They want company going down to hell. You're doing the same things they are and they glory in it. But this thing about he lies and waits secretly, Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. Not Song of Songs. Proverbs 7. Okay? Proverbs 7. Verses 6. Okay? On to, oh, verse 18. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, departing from evil. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Mistake. Why? Because he was void of understanding, departing from evil. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, previous video... We kind of address this thing where, you know, in the evening tide, uh, David got off of his couch and saw Bathsheba naked, bathing herself. Okay. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, there, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot, with, with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. And her feet abide not in her house. That means not rooted in anything except what she wants to do. Okay? Now is she without? Walking around as a harlot. This is, of course, I believe, clearly a reference on to Mystery Babylon. And also those who serve her. Okay? And that's Rome. Okay? Satan's church. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house, now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Verse 9 in Psalm 10. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. That he is Satan, the proud person. Okay, for context, you can use that. But also here in uh, Proverbs 7, it's his church, Roman Catholicism. See how this ties in? Okay? So, now, now she is without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. We've addressed this tons of times. So she caught him. And what did she do? And kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. Hell is only temporary to get you to believe so you can be saved. <laughs> Son, why are you even why are you even talking to that man after what he did to you? I know where I know I know that you want to forgive people, but son, stay away from that dude, okay? Come on. He's not your friend. But anyway, okay? I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vow. Man, I, I truly believe from that movie that's an accurate statement. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. Like it says in Isaiah 40. The, the glory of man is like the grass that withereth away and fadeth. Like a flower that fadeth. Here today, gone tomorrow which dance and struts his stuff upon the stage and then is heard of no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. I believe it is a very accurate statement that that movie said. Vanity. Is vanity Satan's most favorite sin? He sure does use that to ensnare people, doesn't he? Because all this is temporary. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Oh, yeah. I noticed that your channel, it, hold on. 
I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Egypt, synonymous for us in instruction and righteousness of a type of the world. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come. A little don't hurt. A little don't hurt. Rudiments of the world. Come. Let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. That's the cue. Now, we're going to temporarily look at this. All right. Uh, this is the previous video. Okay, this is one of the videos that the Lord gave me. Okay. Here it is. Uh, interact. Okay, here it is. Here's the comment. Uh, this guy right here. Uh, user, whatever. I have been getting a lot of these. Now, whoever you are, if you're a bot, whatever. But if you're an actual person, spiritual and body, go away. Go away. I'm not interested, you people. Okay, but this is what has been happening for literally the past couple of weeks, two weeks. And these comments and brethren have been, I think, uh, removing them these comments because they're just so stupid but check this out here's the comment and this is on the previous video okay hi sir it's like when some of these uh, emails that I've been getting it's like hi dear when you get an email that says hi dear or hello sir warning warning that's one of their tactics okay it's an endearing statement to try to put you off guard Okay, I have peace on, oh, excuse me, verse 13, so she caught him and kissed him, okay, hi sir, I was watching videos on YouTube when I saw your channel, oh great, I really like your video content, but as a YouTube expert, and you know what? There are some of our enemies, especially the one who I hate uh, uh, more than, you know, <laughs> that I hate, you know, <laughs> um, YouTube expert, okay? All right. I noticed one thing. Your video views are getting fewer and fewer. Yes, that is. Yes, that's true. Yes, that's true. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's not about the number. If one person, spirit, soul, and body is edified, is instructed, or whatever, then it's worth it, okay? Then it's worth it. And besides, the sign of the times, okay? Evil is good and good is evil. That's what the, is happening right now. And also, too, there was a time where, um, you know, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, but see, the person, spirit's own body, whom the Lord has in mind, who wants them to hear some truth from the scriptures, those are the ones that I care about. Okay? Those are the ones I care about. And this is what the Lord has called me to do. And it's not about me. Later, I researched your channel and I saw your video SEO score is 14, whatever, I don't know what that means. Your video and found that SEO optimization is not done in your videos due to which your videos are not going to your targeted people. That's not true. Who, who are the target? Whomever the Lord wants. See, see the vanity there? See what he's doing? See whoever, if this is a bot, or if this is uh, the guy I hate from England, or if this is an actual individual, okay? If it is, okay? Look at and, and Proverbs 4, uh, 7 again. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, okay? <laughs> it's all about you. I'm here because of you. You see? You see? Okay? targeted people whoever the Lord wants to have to hear anything that's who 
Okay? Your videos are getting less views and channel subscribers are getting less. That's not true. Okay? I can say as I can say as a YouTube expert, if you can do channel and video SEO friendly things like tag, hashtag, I do hashtag, description and keyword research, then your YouTube channel and video will grow fast. I think your YouTube channel will make your dream come true. It's all about you. See, you see that? See what that is? That's vanity. What is this individual doing? So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace on. Now, he's not offering his own personal help like some have done. But this, this, this is an attack of vanity. You see that? So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come. Come. Let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. Loves. That's exactly what this is. Now, to whoever you are, I'm not attacking you personally. If you're a bot, then whatever. Um, if you're one of the infiltrators, you can go to hell. But if uh, you're just doing whatever, um, look, dude, whoever you are, whatever you are, it doesn't matter to me. Okay? It doesn't matter to me. That That's it. All right? It does not matter to me. This isn't about me. This isn't about money. This isn't to be like a charlatan. Okay? Or to have a clique like uh, Gene Kim or Robert Breaker. Gene Kim who does, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, clickbait titles. It's like, you won't believe what the Bible says. Okay? It's, it's not about that. It's not about that. But see, the enemy will use vanity to get at us, brethren. And what better way than in a population, in a society, than to take away the things of the world that Satan has convinced you that is necessary. When all that is really needful is food and raiment. And the Lord has promised his saints that he will give us what we need. Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. I am not interested, you people. Okay? What is that? 33 minutes in. Most of you have already clicked off anyway. I am not interested. Okay? Alright? This is not a business. Okay? Alright? This is this is not what this is about. This is about our Lord Jesus Christ God my father and about the authorized version of the scriptures to help to exhort the brethren to preach the gospel to warn you about the things of the devil okay that's what this is about it has nothing to do with me do you understand but see people such as the sleazy believers it's all about them because they save themselves by their own belief the catholic it's about them i have peace offerings with me i've been i've been confirmed i've been baptized i ate the cookie i drank the wine okay i had a good confession this week it's all about them it's all about them okay first samuel First Samuel chapter eight. You know, <laughs> okay. Because of my heart issues, I I'm getting old. 
I'm going to be 50 years of age next year if the Lord allows me to live. But I don't have permission yet to go yet. <laughs> but, um, and it's not really getting better. It's kind of stabilizing my, my heart issue. Brad, go to the doctor. Um, I can't. And at this point in the game, I won't. But it's, it's kind of stabilizing, but it's not getting better. It's stabilizing. It, it's stabilizing. It's durable. This is the new normal. But with thermodynamics, this is what I've been called to do. And until the Lord says that's enough, this is what is going to be done. And it's not about lucre. It's not about me. Even though the enemies would like you people to believe that it is. It's not about me. And see, when people make it about themselves, like a certain char charlatan, like Mr. Breaker, like Mr. Kim, like Mr. Helvin, okay, like every single, virtually every single sleazy believist Catholic out there there is, okay, this is, it's not about us. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. Lucre! Money! Mammon! Okay? Lucre! We're going to look at the appearances of Lucre. Lucre appears six times. Oh, golly! Gee willikers! What a coinky dink, huh? Lucre appears six times in the authorized version of the scriptures. And it came to pass, 1 Samuel 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. Abiah. I, get, I still get confused. Those were really good, too, by the way. I still get confused with the thing above the eight, but I'm working on it. I'm working. His, uh, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. Verse 3. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. Thank you, young brother. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, the way we serve our Father reflects our Father. And when you have these Christians acting like the world, being like the world, uh, cursing, making sexual innuendos, um, it's a reflection of their father, the devil, but see, they have convinced you that they speak for the true God, our Father, Jesus Christ, hence bringing shame upon him, and they don't even serve him. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 1. Dead flies. Pazuzu. Ah, gesundheit. Never mind. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor so doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. And just in a similar fashion as um, Ham, um, uh, who dishonored Noah by mocking him and laughing at him when Noah got drunk in his tent. And, like, and uh, Ham was going, hey, hey, guys, look at, look at Father over there. The guys, he's all drunk. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, that, that was Ham's sin. Okay? He was, he was insulting his father and shaming his father by his behavior. The sons of Samuel were doing the exact same thing. They were bringing shame upon their father. Okay? And look at uh, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary perfume, sweet perfume to send forth a stinking savior. I know that's not all that encompasses, but the apothecary's art, okay, is making sweet ointments. And interesting, ointments. Psalm 92. 
Psalm 92. And of course the heretical charismatics like to take this out, way out of proportion. But um, Psalm 92 verses 8 on to verse 15. We saints, we are anointed. We're not Christ's. We're not little Christ's. But the anointing that we have, that is what? The Lord himself that dwells within the saved, born again, uh, believer of the uh, saint. Okay, we're sealed until the day of redemption. Psalm 92. We're not little Christ. i got to remember that. We're not. Okay? We're not. God forbid. We're not. Okay? But, Psalm 92, verses 8 on verse 15. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Yeah, and they're everywhere. Okay? But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. His mercies are new every morning. You, you, you roll that one around in your own head, okay? Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies. And mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like, a palm, like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You know why that the base for that is? But thou, Lord, but thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. If I put the O in there, I'm sorry. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. Like it says in Psalm 102. But thou, O Lord. Okay? Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies. And mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. There are some of my enemies I wish would become my brethren. But there are some of my enemies who have made their choice actively, knowingly serving the Vatican and Satan. That they need to get to their hotbed pretty soon, anytime quick. Okay, and now it wouldn't be quick enough. Okay, all right. Well, we'll perfect hatred, love your enemies. Okay, will be in the uh, will be in the description box, and also the one about the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, we have to understand these things, brethren. Okay, the righteous shall first like, flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And we, the saints, are of the Lord's house. We belong to Him. We are part of His body. Okay? And because He has planted us, okay? All right? Planted and seated in heavenly places. Okay? You get it? Okay? Those that be planted in the house of the Lord... Okay, you can tie all kinds of things in with that verse right there. Okay, about the seal until the day of redemption. Okay, and he cannot deny himself. Go on and on and on. Do your own study. Okay, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. And the glory of the age is the gray head. Okay, they shall be fat and flourishing. And see... These older Christians, they get fat and flourish, yes. But what fruit is there? It's like constantly having to remind you to give, to give us money. Okay? Now, their argument to that is, well, there is a scriptural basis for that. But in every single one you do, come on. Come on. In everything, I mean, scripturally, the, the argument is there. It's like, yeah, okay, you know, Paul, I mean, and that's a legitimate thing. You know, for, you know, it's like, hey, if, you know, for them to ask, okay, yes. But every single thing you do, like Hoven, okay, was constantly, well, he, he's a Jesuit anyway. It's like, hey, give money, support the ministry, blah. Hoven was doing that. Everything the guy did was always asking for money this. Filthy lucre. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. 
to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Okay? No unrighteousness in him. And the sons of Samuel were shaming their father. Why? Why? Okay? And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. And they came, and you see this a lot. For example, Hezekiah and Manasseh. Hezekiah was a godly king. But the Lord, you know, through Isaiah, is like, okay, uh, time to come home. Hezekiah, Hezekiah turned his head to the wall and wept. And it's like, Lord, I don't want to die yet. And the Lord's like, okay, I'll give you 15 more years. He gave him 15 more years. And what came of that? What was the fruit of that 15 year, uh, years? King Manasseh! King Manasseh, who is in heaven. Absolutely. But King Manasseh was the fruit of that 15 years. So we see a scriptural concept of someone having a firm foundation, but for some reason, their fruit. Go. Look at the Rachmanites. Look at these savage, bloodthirsty, lucre-loving twits who attack channels, who attack people, who get them taken down. Okay, there's the one guy um, uh, from Norway who unfortunately we had a headbutting and that's, that's unfortunate. I, I actually like the guy. Okay, but we, we split our ways unfortunately. Okay. All right, but I mean that guy he would he would upload Ruckman stuff and don't get me started on that Freemason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I believe that with wholeheartedly. But but whatever, whatever, whatever. But look at the fruit of the Ruckmanites today. You know, Robert Breaker is more like Ruckman than people give him credit for. Look at him. Look at him. Look at their fruit. Look at the fruit of Ruckman. Now you can argue all you want. That's fine. You like what That's your problem. Okay? That's your problem. All right? Just because you like Ruckman, I'm not going to, you know, that. Hey, that's between you and the Lord. Okay? That's between you and the Lord. Okay? But the point is, look at, look at the fruit of the modern Ruckmanites. Okay? Luckman started out decently, did he not? So did Billy Goat Graham. But look at what happened. Yeah, but look at what happened. Okay? Look what happened with Hezekiah and Manasseh. Why is that? Think about it. Why? Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Verse 4 and 5. Let's finish this up. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah, or Ramah. Ra, the long Rama. Rama. I'm learning. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. And that's a totally different thing. Okay? But the thing about lucre, the vanity, the vanity that lucre provides. Brad, money is unfortunately a necessity nowadays. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the Lord will provide that for His saints. He He provides our needs. Okay. And every once in a while, He'll gives a give us a want. He will. He will. Okay. Now, Timothy, First Timothy, chapter three. Now we saw Lucre. All right. Now, the rest of the appearances of the word lucre have a very interesting connotation added on to it. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 10. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth the good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Okay. 
you 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 do it that as you will. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior. Given the hospitality, apt to teach. I've said it before, I'm gonna say again. If a brother who I don't like, and I don't mean anyone specifically, but if a brother that I don't like suddenly came to me, and who doesn't like me, but came to me out of the like, Brad, I need your help. All right, brother, what, what, what do you need? Okay? There are lots of brethren out there who don't like me. And there are brethren out there that I don't like. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you're my brother, you came to the Lord on his terms, and you're sealed in... See, the spirits identify. We might have... And every cause of dissension and whatever between brethren stems from what? Flesh. Every single time. It's always flesh that gets in the way. Always. Without exception. Well, we disagree doctrinally. And why do you disagree doctrinally? Because you want to believe one thing and he wants to believe something. You know, that's why with the ones who I call my friends, my brethren, y'all well, know about Brother Alexander, the ones over in Europe, uh, the, 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 the sweetheart from Jersey, the, the, the beloved uh, from North Dakota, Brother Jeff. He, he's given me permission to use his name. You know, my, my dear sweet brother from Ohio. You know, um, and, and like I said, the, the dear brother uh, from Norway and the sister from England. And, 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 and the list goes on. And, and the, uh, the, the dear brother um, who is, I forget where you're from, um, uh, 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 the, uh, the Marine, the dear brother. You know, these, these, these people, you know, these are people who are like-minded, okay? Like-minded individuals, all right? All right? But see, we are to be given to hospitality. If someone were to come to me, a brother or a sister, and needed me, I would be there in the capacity that I could. I would. I would. Okay? And that hospitality does not just extend to our immediate family, as it were, meaning the house of God. Okay? Now, granted, I'm not going to let into our apartment a, um, a homeless alcoholic, okay, or a one who is no privy to theft or whatnot, um, if able, and buy him, get him a room to stay in or something like that, take him out to eat, get him get him some clothes or something yes okay but the hospitality thing. you see the enemies take take issue with that and they use that to get in see? but nonetheless let's continue not given to one given we can have wine given to it meaning one after the other like Noah okay no striker I'm not going to start a fight. I'll defend myself. I'll defend myself. Okay. But I'm not going to go out of my way to be a striker. Okay. I'll strike you if you attack me. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not, no, no, no qualms to, uh, to say that. Okay. No qualms. Especially because uh, I have a wife. Okay. Especially. It, it's, see. It's not about you. It's not about you. Hey, guess what? It's not about me. It's not about you. And see, the enemy has the same thing, but they use themselves to glorify their father, the devil. So, and the devil is what? I will be like the Most High. It's not about us. But see, Christianity... That guy, that guy in the comment that we looked at. It's all about you. God loves you. You're special. <clears throat> Not given to wine. No striker. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Filthy. 
dirty, filthy. The remainder appearances of the word lucre will have that connotation of filthy attributed to it. And there is evidence to suggest, you know, our ridiculous Jesuit reserve notes, or the dollar bills and stuff like that here in America, uh, the fiat currency. Um, those are actually quite filthy, whose hands have touched that and whatnot. It really is. It really is. Uh, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. And you know, when you're in a position like this, and the Lord, and you know that the Lord has used you, and the Lord has done things for you and provided for you, it's very easy to get sidetracked and pay attention to the, ah, I, I, I think I've made it. I think I've made it. I, I can pull down my barns and build greater ones. Okay? And in an age that we are in right now, where covetousness, and covetousness has always been the aim of Satan. Vanity! <laughs> vanity of vanities! That is a true statement. Think about it. Like from that movie where this Pacino uh, uh, pretending to be Satan. It's like, and he's smiling, he winks a little. It's like, vanity is definitely my favorite sin. And he's like, ha! Ah! I believe that's accurate. I do believe that's accurate. I do, t I do believe that vanity is Satan's favorite sin. And of course, pride is what? Vanity. Think about it. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Well, you have to have children in order to do what you're doing, Brad. What about Paul? There is no evidence that Paul had an actual uh, child of his own loins begotten. Hmm? That's not always the case. It's not always the case. It's not a requirement to be a bishop, to have children. you got to remember, that's a blessing. And personally, you need to know this, I can't have children. But this is what I have been called to. So watch out with people who want to, who want to throw at you. Well, you can't have kids. Shut up. Let's talk about Paul, huh? Our example. Who he said, be followers of me. Not to be a little click of Paul or something like that, but to follow his example. And remember, Paul said he was, it's like, you know, uh, in the context of marriage, Paul wasn't married, okay? Like our brother Jeff. Uh, our brother Jeff, he, he's one of those rare, rare ones who doesn't burn, okay? He's like, hey, no, Brad, that, that's not something that's, you know, okay? Okay? So keep that in mind. So let's continue. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the Christians? The church of God! Not a novice! <clears throat> Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of a devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. And see, that's another thing that the enemy likes to do with the smear campaigns and stuff like that. Okay? Lest he fall into a reproach and the snare of the devil. A little um, dead flies cause it the anointment, the, the, uh, uh, instead of butchering it. In Ecclesiastes 10, 1 again. Thank you too, brother, for that. That was the uh, catalyst for this today when I saw that. Dead flies cause the ointment of, of, of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly. Him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Okay? Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, 
not greedy of filthy lucre. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And of course, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Come on. Hebrews 5, 1 verse, verse 14. And you know, verse, it's like, uh, where, where is that? Uh, oh, verse 10. God, I, t I told you the verse 10. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless, proved. Let them first be proved. Hebrews 5, verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And you do that through the scriptures, of course. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 5. See, a novice, a babe. Yes, the Lord can use a babe. They like to point to Timothy, but you got to remember, Timothy was brought up as a child in the scriptures. Okay? So a novice, a babe, yes, the Lord can use a babe. Yes, he can. But a babe can fall into the temptation and snare of a devil. Like I have witnessed about a dear young man who attacked me unwarrantedly. Okay? Anyway. Romans 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, having their senses exercised by reason of use. You've been through things. You've been through trials. You've been through tribulations. You've put it into practice. Okay? And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work in patience. But I'm not a doctor. Yeah, you're right. Me neither. And patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us addressing saved people and also 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 just one verse one verse see this is why a novice is not to be in a position like this because why why not a novice let's be lifted up with pride Okay? He fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report with them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Vanity of vanities, say the preacher. All is vanity. Okay? And uh, like I said, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Just one verse. Not 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Who comforted, uh, let's read verses 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Why? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I think about you may be going through something. It's like, why, uh, and why in the wide world of sports entertainment is this happening to me? When and if the Lord gets you through it, what happens when the Lord orchestrates a situation where a brother or a sister or someone has gone is going through something eerily similar to you? You know, the Lord got me through that. Can I share with you the Lord? See how that works? See, it's not all about you. You could be going through something right now. 
that somewhere down the line the Lord will orchestrate something where a brother or sister comes to you and then they're talking to you and you're going through scripture and they, they open up to you and you're like and that, that thing that, that chills down your spine and the goosebumps and you're sitting there like oh wow Lord I went through the same thing that's why But see, when you're focused on vanity, you can lose sight of that. You can easily lose sight of that. And also in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 24 and 25, okay, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after, being proved being proved by having your senses exercised by going through stuff you have to have a little battle experience having experience on a social media platform is one thing when you're standing in front of young men who have guns in their waistbands that's a totally different dynamic when you're standing before a psychopath who knocks tracks out of your hands, who can pummel you into an oblivion, mano y mano, that's a different dynamic. Okay? It is. It is. You can become desensitized to online attack. You can. Sometimes I would like to. <laughs> but you can. It's a different dynamic when you're standing in front of Young man who's got a gun in their waistband. Okay? It's a different dynamic. Okay? Yes, persecution is has a line, yes. But it is a different dynamic when you're up close and personal. It's like, oh boy, I might I, I might have to, you know, put you <laughs> I might have to put you in a knee bar. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like uh, I, I I know how to do a Kimura properly. Okay, I know how to, I beg your pardon, uh, and I believe that my enemy was the one who was talking about it because he has the experience too. But um, I know how to, you know, put a, a Kimura lock on someone appropriately. Because if you put a Kimura that's an arm lock where you, you're doing it like this, it's very dangerous. Um, if you do it wrong, you can hurt yourself. Okay, but I know how to do that. It's like, but I've been in situations just like, Am I going to have to do something to this dude? <laughs> okay, I've been in situations like that. Okay? That's why you get people online here who are so vile because they're hiding behind plastic. It's a different dynamic when you're in... Uh, isn't that right, young brother? Isn't that right? Okay? Isn't that right? Okay? But anyway, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Cannot be hid. Proving them. And how do you prove them? You watch them. You observe them. Okay? It's a process of time. Well, it doesn't take that long! Hmm. Could it be because you are one of those that Jeremiah warns about? I have not sent them, but they ran. They want to run to the forefront. Okay, look at me, look at me. Dude. <laughs> the, way the place we were living took my secular employment, took all, all kinds of things away. It's a bad are you going to do what I want you to do now? Because if you don't, in the time frame, what are you going to do? See, this it's not about you. It's not about you. Okay? It's not about you. Titus! Chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. I love my devotional reading for today. Titus chapter 1. Not Hebrews. 
You know, when you get a set of scriptures that's just about getting broken, Titus chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 13. Again, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self will. See, the false, they run to the front. Like it talks about in Jeremiah chapter 22 or 23. 23, I believe it is. Yes. Where it's like, I have not sent these prophets, but they ran. They want to go, look at me, look at me. Okay? Us saints? I don't want to do that, man. Lord, why? Because we want to do it right. We don't want to offend the Lord. We, we realize, you know, being in this kind of thing, you know, it's like the way we serve you reflects you, you know? That's why the Lord has purposely gotten involved and prevented certain videos from certain videos malfunctioning on a perfectly good and operational laptop or allowing something to happen because he wasn't happy with the way your servant behaved in the video. Okay? All right? But for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed. This isn't about me. Okay? I'm not doing this because I need to make a living. I'm doing this is because this is what the Lord wants me to do. And through this, the Lord provides for our living. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. Okay? Yes, He does. All right? But this is what He has called me to. Okay? All right? No way. I would have chosen this. But this is what he wants. And I am happy to do what he wants me to do. See how that works? For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, no, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men. And there is none good but one. That's God. A good man, okay? We, mankind, is not good. See, the goodness that mankind would have is not of himself. It is of who? God who lives in that saved, born-again believer. Okay? There is none good but God. The good that is in me is not me. It's God who has sealed me with himself. You see how that works? Okay? But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Vain talkers. Vanity. Like the individual who I pointed out to you. Okay? He's talking, he's a vain talker. Every sleazy believist teacher is a vain talker. The Catholics are vain talkers. Okay? All right? Verse 11, and praise the Lord to this, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. For the love of money is the root of all evil which some have coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. <laughs> One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. A specific kindred marked out as liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies? Oh boy. Boy, we can go off on that one, couldn't we? <laughs> this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Let's read the whole thing. Let's finish this up, shall we? Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. 
But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Why? Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Because they are self-willed. It's all about themselves. They're charlatans. They profess they, that they know God, but in wakes they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobates. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Not Maccabees. Matthew 23. Verses 1 and verse 12. Matthew 23. Describing the spiritual climate before the redemption of the purchased possession. Before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because Matthew chapter 24 is about the time of Jacob's trouble. How do you prove that to you very quickly? Verse 13 in Matthew 24. We today in this dispensation do not have to endure to the end to be saved. Because once we are sealed, we come to the Lord on His terms. He seals us. We're once saved, always saved. We don't have to endure to the end to be saved for nothing. It's a different. He's describing the time of Jacob's trouble. But Matthew chapter twenty-three, verses one under verse twelve. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, "The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. A modern Pharisee is someone who holds tradition over the scriptures." Catholics, okay? All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Now remember at this time, of the covenants of promises, uh, 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 Romans chapter 3 verse 1, you know, what advantage then hath the Jew? Well, it was to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? To the Jew, the Hebraic people were given the law, the covenants and what not. So they, at this time, they were speaking the truth of the law because it was given on to them, but they weren't doing what they said. They weren't walking their talk. They were covetous. Let's continue. For they bind heavy burdens and, and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, and enlarge the borders of their garments. All they do is to be seen from, by men. Okay. All right. Before YouTube undid the thing where the subscribers were known. This is the most subscribers I've ever had on this channel. Excuse me. That the Lord has allowed me on this channel. Okay. That he has given me. This is the most that there has ever been. I don't want thousands of subscribers. I don't. Thank you to you who do. Thank you. Thank you. But I don't want that. Person, I don't want it to be big. I don't. Okay? It's not about me. And see that, that concept. Well, if Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. No, it wouldn't. It would be the least of all saints. It would be the least of all fellowship. Because narrow is the way. But see, the way that is broad to destruction. Okay? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the former borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men Rabbi, Rabbi. <laughs> Be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. This is talking about a religious title. Take in consideration the context, okay? Like Father Baker, Father Joseph, okay? Father Kim. Okay. Neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. And he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Hmm. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And while we're here, 25 and 28, on to 28, 
in Matthew 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. The hypocrite thing. That's a good one. Writing for a link. For ye are like unto whited sepulchers. Sepulchers. <laughs> sepulchers. Just thought. Which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead men's bones and, uh, and of all uncleanness. Facade of devils. Hmm. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm sure this, this will continue with me getting these irritating, annoying things. Like I'm sure one of these guys will, this very video, will send me another uh, email with screenshots about what it's like. You know what, guys? Galatians chapter 5, 12 on verse 13, uh, 2 on verse 13. But I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law, and you can't. Okay, you can't keep it perfectly. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. Yeah, because you're seeking to justify yourself through the law, where Christ is the one who justifies us. He is our justification. And see, when you go to do something, it's you doing it. You are the one justifying. Go oh, kind of like just believe and receive. Okay? For we through the Spirit, capital S, Wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Someone coming around preaching to you vanity. I do believe that. And if Satan had a favorite sin, I do believe for him it would be vanity. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whoever, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The, the cross is death. The cross is death. Okay? Death to self. But see, a false prophet who runs to the forefront offering you vanity. See, see if I preached something that was vanity unto you, to puff up your flesh, then the death of the cross would be one of none effect. And we have to die to ourself. Okay? The false preach to you things of your flesh. Why do you think guys like Breaker and Kim are so popular? Why? Why do you think Christianity is popular for the most part? Because God loves you. It's all about you. Okay. And where are we to, uh, to uh, verse 13? That was it. Oh, wait, verse 13. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's verse 11 again. On to verse 13. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease. I would that ye were even cut. I would they, excuse me, were even cut off which trouble you. And they will be. For brethren, ye have been called on to liberty. 
Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love, but by love serve one another. Charity is not liberty. Liberty comes as a result from Christ's charity, sure. But things that are different are not the same, okay? Which was one of the other reasons why things happened the way they did, kid. And the one who you work for, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, that's old. That's old. I'm over that. I, I feel sorry for that guy for that reason because he fell for that. But n nevertheless, that, that's over and done with. Okay? That's over and done with. Okay. All right. But see, again, what, what does Satan utilize? To attack you, to attack us, vanity. First Peter chapter five, and then we'll be done. Okay. First Peter chapter five, not Revelation. Revelation. Okay. First Peter chapter five, verses one on to verse three. The elders which are among you, are, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Oversight. It's a cost unto us. Okay? It's a cost. It costs us something. Okay? Paul addresses this. I, I've robbed other churches so I might benefit you. Okay? It's a cost to us. Okay? That's, that's the way it works. Okay? Not by constraint. Uh, not by constraint, but willingly. Willingly. God's not going to force you to do this. Nor for filthy lucre. But of a ready mind. Neither being lords over God's heritage, Mr. Diotrephes, who love it to have the preeminence, they run to the forefront. But being in samples to the flock. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First one verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Philippians 2. And, we'll, uh, and then we will be done. Philippians 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. If. Circle the if. Oops. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, capital S, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like mine. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, and having the same love, our Lord Jesus Christ. But see what happens when brethren have... What happens every single time? Flesh. Flesh happens every single time. Then what happens? You want your cake and eat it too. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Oh, brother so-and-so, you have a great ministry. Oh, brother so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, shut up. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because only the Lord can do something with a nitwit like me. Praise the Lord, not me. Okay? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And right there, right there, hold your place. Let's read verse 4. 
Look not every man on his own things, but every man also the things of others. Okay? And that doesn't mean nosing or prying into people's, if I could help a brother or a sister, I'm going to. That's the way that works. Okay? But, you know, <laughs> verse 3, let nothing be done to strife or vain glory. One of my favorite verses of all the scripture. 1 Timothy, not 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy, verse one, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I'm the least of all men. I'm the worst of sinners. Saints, well, like oh, Brad, I'm worse than you. Maybe not, but. And see, like we addressed uh, in the previous video, some will use that as a way to exalt themselves. But see, the difference is in a saint. Number one, we know, like Job. Therefore, I for myself. You know, the person I hate the most on earth is me. Is me. Me. I hate myself more than I hate that individual from England. I really do. I hate myself more than I hate him. I do. You know why? You know why? Romans 7. Ro Romans 7. Verses 14. On to the close. Then we'll be done. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, fleshly, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. I sin. I have a pride problem. I have a thorn in the flesh. I got a brother, a sister, I got a wife who keep me in line. The Lord pricks my heart in the scripture. Okay? I am my worst enemy most of the times. Even worse than the guy from England. If I, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. And the law tells me what sin is. Okay? Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And you read Romans chapter 8. Explains that. He's not distancing himself. What he's saying is, it's my fault. He's not, he's not distancing. He's accepting. He's like, look, I don't want to sin. I don't believe in sinning at all. But I'm going to. That doesn't mean like Oscar Wilde, we embrace it. No, we just be realize it's like, man, at his best state. Man in his best state is altogether vanity. And that is what Satan through all this stuff is using. Vanity. Do you get it? Okay? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. We can't do the law perfectly. We're not required to keep the law self-ethically today anyway. We at our best state are vanity. And as you saw the comment, vanity. That's what Satan uses. Okay? For I know that in me, that is my flesh, Dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> now if, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yeah, right here. Okay? 
For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, the hidden man of the heart, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. If your eye offended, pluck it out. If your hand offended, cut it off. If your foot offended, cut it off. Not literally. Just get away from it. Flee from it. Okay? Huh. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin what does that mean as long as we draw breath on earth saints we're going to sin there ain't nothing we can do about it we strive to not sin but it's going to happen anyway that doesn't mean we embrace that thing and give yourself into sin like Oscar Wilde said the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give into it shut up no what do you think about that there Mr. Wilde huh okay what is he saying? No matter how I try, I can't be sinlessly perfect. We can't be hard on ourselves enough, but to try to attain sinless perfection on this earth today is impossible. It's impossible. And when you come across someone, you got to stop sinning, and they say, I don't sin anymore. You've done two things. You called yourself a liar. You, you, you call God a liar, and... Um, you're saying you're perfect, that you don't sin anymore. You've lied, and you're saying you're sinless. Okay? You're proud. You're prideful. Pride. <laughs> okay? You've lied, and you're showing your pride right away. A man in his best state is altogether vanity. So, that's going to be it for this little video. Okay? Be and like I said, like I said, okay? Like I said, I know for certain, I know, I know for certain that these guys are going to be, even this video, you're going to, I'm going to see a, a comment, oh, but what, you guys just go pound some sand. Go take a long walk off of a short pier, okay? I'm not interested. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Big, big videos are coming. And they will. So, I love you. Thank you. Continue to pray for one another. Please pray for us. Thank you for watching. If you do, and we'll see you in the next video. Okay.